welcome to chemistry lover and this is the carbonyl chemistry series so in the previous video we introduced the addition reaction and substitution reaction to the carbonyl compound and we discussed about the esterification reaction so let me just revisit this another one time so the esterification reaction was actually the reaction of acid and alcohol in presence of acid catalysis which will give you the ester right so this is the esterification reaction now how this reaction happens so at first esterification reaction starts with the protonation at the carbonyl carbon atom of the acid and on that activated carbonyl group the alcohol attacks to give you some intermediate like this which which and o h r plus right so this is the intermediate now it will undergo the cross protonation or proton exchange basically this proton will move from here to any of this oh group to give you this oh2 plus over here another oh and this or now when this push back this oh will go and it will give you this thing this finally deprotonation from here will give you the corresponding ester so this is the esterification reaction now in this video we will talk about the ester hydrolysis right so our today's topic is ester hydrolysis and this ester hydrolysis reaction occurs in both acid and base catalyzed form now both acid catalyzed and base catalyzed ester hydrolysis reaction consist of four different mechanisms in each category so that means we have four acid catalyzed uh, ester hydrolysis reaction and four base catalyzed ester hydrolysis reaction this makes a total of eight different pathways by which the ester can be hydrolyzed and we will see all these pathways one by one and we will also see their nomenclature so let us first talk about the acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis reaction and in this category the first reaction mechanism which comes is like this so this is our ester and in acid what can happen is this carbonyl group it has uh, oxygen lone pair and it is high energy oxygen lone pair so it can easily take this proton to give you this kind of activated uh, carbonyl compound and on that if you have water molecule present in your reaction medium this water can attack over here to give you some intermediate like this so here you will have this OH2 plus here you have this OH and you have this OR so this is the intermediate we get now on this intermediate proton exchange will occur and that will give you OH OH and here you will have ORH that means proton goes from here to here right so here you will have a positive charge now any of this OH will push its electron and this will go so it will give you this O H and here we will have protonated form and at the same time you will get this alcohol back now simple uh, deprotonation will give you your acid so this is how the acid hydrolysis occurs now what is the name of this reaction what is the nomenclature if you uh, see this mechanism you can see this reaction is a second order reaction because uh, here this attack of this o attack of water on this uh, protonated form is important and that means in the rate determining step both this uh, water concentration as well as this uh, particular species the protonated form of the molecule that is the ester itself is present and that means it is a bimolecular reaction at the same time it involves the cleavage of this bond so it involves the cleavage of this particular bond you can see so this is called acyl oxygen bond this bond is called acyl oxygen bond because it is this bond so this particular bond is called acyl oxygen bond and that's why the reaction is named as a 
AC2. This uh, give us the information that this A, this capital A, it stand for acid catalyzed, acid, acid catalyzed. So this is for acid catalyzed and this AC represent for acyl oxygen cleavage because it involves this acyl oxygen cleavage so we have AC and 2 means it is a bimolecular reaction. So this is called AAC2 mechanism or bimolecular acid catalyzed acyl oxygen cleavage. So this is the first uh, category of ester hydrolysis. Now let us talk about the second one. So in this case what happens let us say you have a group where uh, your um, compound your acid is like this and in this case this R group is actually an aromatic ring for simplicity we just put some phenyl ring over here so let us say this is phenyl ring so this has some special feature we will see so now if the protonation occurs what will happen so if protonation occurs you will have this species first because the carbonyl is the group which is more prone towards protonation and now this proton exchange can occur between this oxygen and this oxygen to finally give you this carbonyl group over here and ORH plus over here. Now here is the important step this oxygen lone pair can push and it can go. So from here we get this pH this so we get this acylium cation and here we have this ORH the, the alcohol back. Now on this acylium cation if our water molecule attacks you can see uh, this PHCO OH2 plus and finally when it deprotonates we will have the acid. So now in this particular reaction you can see this cleavage this acyl oxygen cleavage again it involves acyl acyl oxygen cleavage you can see this is the acyl oxygen bond and it involves acyl oxygen cleavage. So AC term will be there and also it is acid catalyzed so A term will also be there but now this reaction is unimolecular why because this step from from here from here to here this step is the rate determining step and in this step water molecule is not involved and that's why it is unimolecular reaction and that's why it is called AAC1 so it is acid catalyzed acyl oxygen cleavage and unimolecular reaction so this is the second category now why I introduced phenyl group over here the reason is this kind of acyl intermediate is only stable when you have phenyl kind of uh, substitution because you can see if you have phenyl what it can do it can have resonance right so it can have resonance with this uh, CO triple bond and that's why it is stabilized if you have normal alkyl group it may not be stabilized so whenever you have this aromatic uh, group or any other conjugating group then only this AAC1 mechanism operates right in any other condition the normal ester hydrolysis that is the AAC2 occurs but sometime what happens is let us say you have a very bulky group over here O and here you have a very bulky group something butyl group uh, let us say here also you have some bulky group butyl group so then what can happen is this attack of water molecule over here to give you this uh, in this kind of intermediate OH OH2 plus and OBU this is this is not easy because this has a tremendous steric hindrance in the tetrahedral intermediate you have these large groups together and that is why the AAC2 mechanism cannot operate here so by default it will go through the AAC1 mechanism so whenever you have this stabilizing group or you have tremendous steric hindrance then only the AAC1 mechanism operates now let us talk about the third uh, category of reaction and in this case what happens let us say you have some uh, group like tart butyl group over here so now when you have protonation so first you will have uh, protonation over here to give you this kind of species now this tart butyl group can easily go like this so here what you will have is you will have a star in this particular step and you have this tertiary butyl carbocation now on this tertiary butyl carbocation water molecule will attack and finally you will have this tertiary butanol but now in this reaction you can see uh, the, the cleavage occurs at this alkyl oxygen uh, 
bond so this is so in this case this particular bond is alkyl oxygen bond so previously we had acyl oxygen so this this is the acyl oxygen bond and now this is the alkyl oxygen cleavage and so here uh, the term comes a l k alk and also it is acid catalyzed so capital a will be there now it is now the question is whether it is unimolecular or bimolecular now in this particular case you can see the reaction is unimolecular because no other molecule is involved in this particular step no other molecule is involved only this molecule is responsible so this is a alk 1 so this this name suggests for acid catalyzed alkyl oxygen cleavage and unimolecular so this is the alkyl oxygen bond so this is the third kind of uh, mechanism which operates in acid catalyst reaction now let us talk about the next one and that is let's say you have a case where you have this small group like methyl group let's say you have a methyl ome methyl ester simple methyl ester and now if acid uh, acid is introduced so what will happen it will be protonated over here so this is now ome so this is the thing this is the activated form now because it is methyl group and it is it is very uh, easy to do SN2 reaction on this methyl group. So, if you have water molecule, it will easily attack on this methyl group to give you this kind of reaction. And here you will get the acid. At the same time, you will get the methanol. So, and one thing, if I forget to put this reversible arrow, you should know that in every step of this ester hydrolysis reaction, you have a reversible arrow because all the steps are reversible and in this case you can see this is also also what it is alkyl oxygen cleavage so this is also a a l k but now in this case water molecule and this particular molecule is involved so this is bimolecular reaction and it is called a l a l k 2 so this is a a l k 2 that is acid catalyzed alkyl oxygen cleavage and bimolecular reaction so these are the all reactions which are acid catalyzed so we have four acid catalyzed reaction ac1 ac2 alk1 alk2 now let us talk about base catalyzed reaction so in base the sim the first reaction which we will talk about is so now in this case in base catalyzed all the steps are not reversible right so first step is reversible where your base the oh minus will attack over here to give you this kind of intermediate and you have this but now after that when this will push back this or will go so you will have this acid and this or minus now this step is not reversible so we cannot put reversible arrow over here so this is very important i i should put it with the red arrow so this step is not reversible because this or cannot further attack over here this attack is not possible only this reaction goes from this direction to this direction and this reverse direction is not allowed now what will happen is this or will actually take proton from here and you will have this acetate and roh because this ro minus is more basic than acetate and in this reaction what will be the nomenclature so this is base catalyzed so b term will be there now because it involves the acyl oxygen cleavage again so it is bac and also this oh is involved so o both oac and this ester is involved so this is bimolecular reaction because this is the rate determining step and this is called bac2 base catalyzed acyl oxygen cleavage bimolecular now let us talk about the second category in the second category what can happen is simply uh, let's say you have this um, or and again again let's say you have bulky groups here bulky groups or a stabilizing group let's say you have butyl group over here so then this can simply push and this or can go to give you this buo this acylium cation over here and at the same time you have this ro minus now on this water molecule can attack or simply because you are doing the reaction in basic medium so you you will have more nucleophilic oh minus so this oh minus will attack over here to give you this bu co 
OH and finally in every case because this RO minus is more basic compared to acetate so finally you will have this acetate and this ROH mixture so here this R is actually the butyl group so in this case you can see it also involves the acyl oxygen cleavage so AC term will be there base term will be there but now it is unimolecular because in this rate determining step when the o OR group is leaving no nucleophile is involved the nucleophilic attack is not here the rate determining but this cleavage is rate determining and that's why it is unimolecular reaction it is called BAC1 now if we talk about alkyl oxygen cleavage then it is like let's say you have this species again you have this species and without any kind of protonation without any kind of protonation this can go to give you this O minus and this uh, tertiary butyl uh, sorry this uh, tart butyl cation on this tart butyl cation simple OH minus can attack and you will have this tart butyl alcohol whereas this is your acetate so here you can see this involves the alkyl oxygen cleavage so this is called B A L K. now no other nucleophile is present in the uh, in the rate determining step so this is B A L K one that is base catalyzed uh, mm, alkyl oxygen cleavage and unimolecular reaction now the difference with A L K one is A a alk 1 is simple so between b alk 1 and a alk 1 the difference is in case of a alk 1 we had first we had protonation over here right and then this occurs but in case of b alk 1 you have no protonation from simple molecule this uh, cleavage occurs and no other base or acid is involved base is involved only when this tart butyl cation is formed right now let us talk about the final category and that is when you have this kind of OME group and if you are doing the reaction in acidic not in acidic medium but in basic medium so you have OH minus and it is a much better nucleophile so it can easily attack over here and no protonation is required over here so you will get this acetate at the same time you will get methanol so in this so this is also not reversible step this is irreversible step and only reaction goes in right right, right hand side so this is called b alk 2 because both oh minus and the ester is present in the rate determining step only one step is there this is simple sn2 kind of reaction and this is b a l 2 so these are the all four uh ester hydrolysis reactions which are there uh, and now uh, finally I have one question for you uh, tell me one reaction where ester hydrolysis occurs but it is a neutral condition in neutral condition ester hydrolysis also occurs just uh, let me know in the comment section so here I will stop this video thank you for watching and have a good day